We're going to take you now over to the White House. President Biden is delivering remarks, urging Congress to pass his national security supplemental request, which includes funding for Ukraine. Let's listen. And quite frankly, of our partners as well. <clears throat> this cannot wait. Congress needs to pass supplemental funding for Ukraine before they break for the holiday resources. As simple as that. Frankly, I think it's stunning that we've gotten to this point in the first place. While Congress, Republicans in Congress, are willing to give Putin the greatest gift he could hope for and abandon our global leadership, <clears throat> not just in Ukraine, but beyond that. We've all seen the brutality that Putin has inflicted on Ukraine, invading another country, trying to subjugate his neighbors to his iron rule, committing atrocities, atrocities against Ukrainian civilians, trying to plunge them into the cold and darkness of winter by bombing their electrical grid so they don't have any heat during the winter, <clears throat> or electricity, for that matter, kidnapping thousands of Ukraine, thousands of Ukrainian children from their parents and families and keeping them in Russia. Russian forces are committing war crimes. It's as simple as that. It's stunning. Who is prepared to walk away from holding Putin accountable for this behavior? Who among us is really prepared to do that? You know, for the better part of two years, the brave people of Ukraine have denied Russia a victory on the battlefield. They've defeated Vladimir Putin's ambition to dominate Ukraine. And the people of the United States can and should take pride, they should take pride, that we've enabled Ukraine's success <clears throat> thanks to the steady supply of weapons and ammunition. We provided them together with our partners and our allies. I just did a meeting with the G7, which was one of the issues we discussed. All the European leaders, we are prepared to stay with us, stay with Ukraine, <clears throat> and our European friends are as well. Who in the United States is prepared to walk away from that? I tell you, I'm not prepared to walk away. And I don't think the American people are either. If Putin takes Ukraine, he won't stop there. It's important to see the long run here. He's going to keep going. He's made that pretty clear. If Putin attacks a NATO ally, if he keeps going, and then he attacks a NATO ally, where we've committed as a NATO member that we defend every inch of NATO territory, then we'll have something that we don't seek and that we don't have today. American troops fighting Russian troops. American troops fighting Russian troops if he moves into other parts of NATO. Make no mistake, today's vote's going to be long remembered. And history's going to judge harshly those who turn their back on freedom's cause. We can't let Putin win. Say it again, we can't let Putin win. It's in our overwhelming national interest and international interest of all our friends. Any disruption <clears throat> in our ability to supply Ukraine clearly strengthens Putin's position. We've run out of money to be able to do that in terms of authorization. Extreme Republicans are playing chicken with our national security, holding Ukraine's funding hostage to their extreme partisan border policies. Let me be clear. We need real solutions. I support real solutions at the border. I put forward a comprehensive plan the first day I came into office. I made it clear that we need Congress to make changes to fix what is a broken immigration system, because we know, we all know it's broken. And I'm willing to do significantly more. But in terms of changes of policy and to provide resources that we need at the border, I'm ready to deal, change policy as well. I've asked for billions of dollars for more border agents, more immigration judges, more asylum officers. Republicans have to decide if they want a political issue or if they want a solution at the border. Do they really want a solution? It cannot be sustained as it is now. We need a real solution. And my team has been engaged in negotiations with Senate, with Senate Democrats and Republicans on border security. Democrats. Democrats have put forward a bipartisan compromise on the table. Leader Schumer and Senate Democrats also have offered to let Republicans propose amendments to that border proposal. But Republicans have objected. They said, no, we, we, we don't want you to even introduce your proposal, because then we're not going to, And even though the Democrats say, you can amend it any way you want. No, no, we don't want to do that. This has to be a negotiation. Republicans think they get everything they want without any bipartisan compromise. That's not the answer. That's not the answer. 
And now they're willing to literally kneecap Ukraine on the battlefield and damage our national security in the process. Look, I know we have our divisions at home. Let's get past them. This is critical. Petty, partisan, angry politics can't get in the way of our responsibility as a leading nation in the world. And literally, the entire world is watching. The entire world is watching. What will the United States do? And think if we don't support Ukraine. What's the rest of the world going to do? What's Japan going to do, which is supporting Ukraine now? What's going to happen in terms of the G7? What's going to happen in terms of our NATO allies? What are they going to do? If we walk away now, <clears throat> it'll only embolden other would-be aggressors. <clears throat> so I'm calling on Congress to do something and do the right thing, to stand with the people of Ukraine, stand against the tyranny of Putin, stand for freedom, literally stand for freedom. Let's get this done. We're the reason Putin has not totally overrun Ukraine and moved beyond that. And you all heard me talk about it before. If, in fact, we walk away, how many of our European friends are going to continue to fund? And at what rates are they going to continue to fund it? This is too serious. Like I said, I am willing to make significant compromises on the border. We need to fix the broken border system. It is broken. And thus far, I've gotten no response. So I just, uh, we're going to be a vote a little bit later today. We'll know where we go from there. But I wanted to make this comment before the vote, and I'm sure I'll be talking with you after the vote. Thank you very much for listening. Appreciate it. Mr. Mr. President, given the current right. impasse, would you be okay with Democrats willing to uh, put more on border policy to get this current package through? Yes. What would I, you be okay with Democrats agreeing to? Uh, I've already with? laid out in our negotiations with Lankford and others what we're willing to do, significantly more particularly by starting off equipping the border capacity that we need on the border, from judges to more border security, in addition to making some substantive changes. But they're unwilling to do it. We thought we, I, I really thought, <clears throat> I felt good for a while. I thought we were making some real progress. Langford's a decent guy. It looked like he was prepared to move in a way, in a direction, that we could come up with a compromise, both changing in substance, changing policy on the border, as well as security at the border. But they've walked away. It's take everything we have here on their one proposal, which is extreme, or nothing. In the meantime, the nothing means we don't get any support for our friends and our the innocent people of Ukraine. Anyway, I'll President talk to you more after the and also China. President Biden on Ukraine and also China. Uh, there is polling by the Associated Press that shows that almost 70 percent of Americans, including 40 percent of Democrats, believe that you acted either illegally or unethically in regards to your family's business interests. Can you explain to the Americans, uh, to Americans amid this impeachment inquiry, why you interacted with so many of your son and brother's foreign business associates? I'm not going to comment that I did not. And it's just a bunch of lies. You didn't interact with many of their lies. business associates? I did not. They're what? lies. What? Mr. President, do you think there is any Democrat who could defeat Donald Trump other than you? You've been listening to President Biden urging Congress to pass his national security supplemental request. He says he thinks it's stunning we've gotten to this point without more funding for Ukraine. The president also says that Americans should take pride in helping, US, in helping Ukraine in their fight against Russia. Biden said, quote, we can't let Putin win. Joining us now is CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes. Nancy, the president really made a direct appeal to Congress saying we need to get out of these petty politics because nothing less than our leadership in the world is at stake. He said he was willing to make compromises on the southern border. Do you think that that's going to be enough to actually lead Congress to action? Well, it hasn't been enough so far, Lana, because Republicans want to go further on uh, border security, and they think that this is their best opportunity to do it because they know how important additional Ukraine funding is to this White House. Now, it's important to a lot of Republicans and Democrats on Capitol Hill as well, but we're getting close to the end of the year. Republicans are looking for a win that they can take back to their base. This is also, of course, an issue, border security, that they care a lot about. And so they have been laying down some ultimatums over the past 48 hours, saying, essentially, if you don't take our plan on border security or something close to it, 
we are not going to play ball on Ukraine funding. So this was the president coming out and sort of laying down his own marker, arguing that if this doesn't pass by the end of the year, that Ukraine could falter in its war against Russia. And trying to up the stakes even further, Lana, he argued that if Ukraine does fail here, it could have disastrous consequences, not just for Europe, but for the United States as well. If it emboldens Russia, leads to them invading other countries, potentially NATO countries, where for the first time you'd have U.S. soldiers squaring off against Russian soldiers. So that's what the president argues uh, are the stakes here. And he's making this speech now. He's making this speech today because the Senate is set to take its first vote this afternoon, a test vote, if you will, to see if Democrats can push Republicans off of their position and get them to support about $60 billion worth of funding for Ukraine, along with funding for Israel and Taiwan, all of that up in the air right now. Absolutely. And as you made that point about NATO, so essential because that would implicate the United States to get involved in that war in a much more direct way. Nancy Cordes, appreciate you. Thanks. You're welcome.